Hey there, fellows. All right, so check this out. We've come up with a really cool experiment for this episode. Here we have a motor, which has been on a stand multiple times. It came apart on many occasions, it's been through a lot. And it works beautifully. But then we got this request to try the following. We take an engine, here it is, four-stroke internal combustion. Now the idea is to replace the piston rings. But instead of running normal ones, we fit the pistons with ones made of rubber. I mean, a rubber piston ring should sort of work like a seal. I'd imagine we'd still have some compression and the engine would start and run. The main question is how long it'll be able to run. I'm fairly sure nobody has ever tried this. So why don't we dismantle the motor? The internals should be in decent enough shape. We remove the pistons, I'll go look for some seals. We'll cut the grooves out for them to fit. Install the rubber seals and attempt to start the engine. Alright, let's do this. We've got a special merch offer for you, fellows, to brighten the mood in these turbulent times. Starting today, we'll be offering a mystery gift box. When purchasing the box, you're guaranteed to receive a certain selection of stuff from our shop, as well as the chance to win something big. You spend a fixed $30 price for the box, and you're guaranteed to receive a Garage 54 mug, a pair of socks, a sticker, an air freshener for your car, as well as a key fob. One out of ten buyers will be sent an expensive gift on top of that, which could be a cap, t-shirt, hoodie, or a document holder. So we'll be putting something expensive into one out of every ten boxes. If you'd like to support our channel and try your luck, there's gonna be a link in the video description. So out of sheer interest, we want to try... We want to do a compression test to see if it increases at all with rubber piston rings. So we'll do a test. And once we throw everything together, we'll do another compression test. Yeah, this doesn't look too good. Okay, that's a six. Now let's try cylinder two. A solid seven and a half. Let's try number three. Same. Seven. And number four. Enough. Another seven. I'd say it's more than adequate for this engine to start and run. Okay, time to put this on a stand, take it apart. At which point... I go look for rubber seals. Will an engine start on rubber piston rings? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, fellas, check this out. You would have just seen us slightly widening the grooves on these pistons to fit these rings, those we've installed. As for whether they're at all effective, well, we've yet to turn the engine over, so... Wide open throttle. Enough. Eight. Straight off the bat, look at that. Eight when it used to be six. The compression has increased. Let's go. 
Oi. Uh, spoke too soon. Six in this one. Why would that be now? I have absolutely no idea. Let's try again. Same story. Okay, well, that's a one and a half kilo decrease. Now this one. <laughs> this is just bad. Four. Come on, seriously though? Now it'll be like two. Aw oh, man, don't jinx it, two? Enough. Five. You know, I think we need to repeat number one and see where it's at now. Because the rubber seals very well might have picked the oil up or pushed it down. Stop. After a couple of pumps, it immediately jumped to eight. So that's eight, six, and five. Cylinder three might not even fire. Though if it starts, they're all gonna work. But how long is it gonna last? We're about to find out. While you were away, I already had it running on three cylinders. You slacker! Did you see that? The engine started immediately on rubber piston rings. I only wanted to check for spark. And it went and started. Yeah, give it to me. Far out, dude. Let her rip. And it stalled. Again? Why is it so bright? <laughs> and at the same time black. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> wow, it runs. <laughs> Wait a second. We gotta figure this out. I mean, of course, rubber compression rings are an utterly stupid idea. But at the end of the day, the engine works. It even revs up and reacts to throttle. And we haven't even fried the rings after a couple of starts. Isn't that shocking? The rubber is gonna become rock hard in there. Can you imagine how it's gonna run? We'll have made a lot of racing engine. Hit it. It runs! Why'd you disconnect the power? The wire was melting. Well, to hell with it. What burns out doesn't rust out. <laughs> wow, this is really something. An internal combustion engine running on rubber piston rings. Now, obviously, to reach peak temperature, the combustion chambers are gonna need a bit of time, but the combustion process is gonna involve exposure to an open flame. I never knew domestic rubber seals were so well made. I mean, we keep hearing that Russian products are of such low quality, the hell they are. I mean, ones from another place we like to order stuff from would have burned out by now. But these work and they do not care. Okay, let's carry on.
It'll overheat before the rings die. Yeah, I also think it'll be quicker to overheat. We should have probably hooked up some cooling, but then we weren't expecting it to run for so long. Moreover, we weren't expecting it to start. Wait a second, what's going on? Isn't the ignition off? Why is it backfiring? Oh, I think I know why. One of the rings might be burning, resulting in… yeah. We have particles flying around and they might be igniting the mixture. Wow, this couldn't have turned into a diesel, right? Time to hook up some cooling? Otherwise it's going to overheat and that's gonna suck. We do need to cool the cylinders. And then, yeah, we'll fire it up again. We can use tap water, sure. Alright, let's do this. Eh, too slow. Holy cow. It ran for quite a while, but now you can really smell the burning rubber. That was on one cylinder. This engine is a trooper. Doesn't want to give up? Yeah, this is quite a pleasant surprise. I didn't even believe it'd work, but it already ran like 500 times. And it just keeps on running, it doesn't even care. I suggest we let it cool off to the point where it's cold again. And do another compression test. Okay, it's cool again, we're looking good. Wide open throttle. And let's measure the compression again. Given that it still runs okay. Let's go. That'll do. Holy cow! Holy cow! Eight, just like it was before. Very nice. These rubber rings are off their face. Holy cow! Eight! That's a solid eight! And even a bit higher! Get it! Enough? Eight! A solid eight! Let's go! Another solid eight! Wow, how did that happen? So when we started and the engine still had steel rings, the compression was 6, 7.5, 7, and 7. Then after we installed the rubber rings, it grew to 8 in cylinder 1, dropped to 6 in 2, 4 in 3, 5 in 4. And then we started it, we allowed it to run. This is indeed a very unusual phenomenon with the compression leveling out to 8. Now, I don't know what grooves they could have filled, but the engine most definitely runs. And that... 
I'm not going to say it makes me mad, but nobody expected this sort of outcome. Hey, well, let's keep it running while it still does. We'll reinstall the plugs, fire it up, and see how long it's able to last. You know, I guess if your engine is running poorly, you can fit some rubber piston rings and sell the car, right? This engine is unbelievable. Pour the water. It's about to start spraying. It feels as if it's starting to seize up slightly. So here's the situation. It does react when I move this around. You get less air and more fuel. But it doesn't want to react to throttle input. Also, barely any gases are coming out of the breather tube. Meaning that apparently there's nothing blowing by the rings from the combustion chambers into the crankcase. That is truly phenomenal. What sort of miracle motor is this? What's really neat is that with there being no collector pipe at the moment, it is very obvious that cylinders 2 and 3 are firing more actively than the other two. Meanwhile, 1 and 4, which are down here, well, 2 and 3 lead, and when these follow, we see a... Well, first a big-ass flame comes out from here, and then it's a red sort of trail like on a jet airplane. And that tells us they are really firing. Granted, that only occurs higher in the rev range. So 2 and 3 are active in the mid range, while 1 and 4 join the party at higher revs. Amazing. But hey, it works. Man, I'd really like to have a look at the internals. Okay, let's go. Enough. Eight. Same as before. That's an 8, no matter how you cut it. 8 solid. Well, let's go. That's enough. 8? Eight. 8 again, look at that. Now, I'm sure you can hear it. There's actually some engine tuning happening in the next room. Can you hear it? But that's a video for the Garage 54 Drift channel. Man, what a cool project that is. It could use some rubber, but then again, it does have a turbo. It'll blow them right out. Hit it. Enough. Eight. I so want to tear it apart and have a look. See how they're faring in there. But before we take it apart, we'll run it some more. Fifteen minutes later... Oh. 
становится все хуже и хуже. Ладно. Is it out of gas? No, there definitely should be some left. Evidently, it doesn't want to run anymore. Plus, it is really starting to seize up. We definitely have enough oil pressure in this engine. That we did check, plus it always ran so well. Okay, now that it won't start. And since I'm so curious to see the internals, time to tear it apart. Well, guys, here is where we're at with this. Check this out. We have pulled the pistons out. There you have the rubber rings. And what's really interesting is that we installed them. They're a good fit for the grooves, but they do stick out. And quite a bit at that. I'd say by about half a millimeter. <sighs> this one right here. Oh, right, I see. It didn't quite seat itself for some reason. You can see how during installation it sort of got picked out of the groove. And twisted. I thought I stuffed it in there. Yeah, good stuff. Did that happen anywhere else? What about this one? So yeah, apparently when we were fitting the pistons, these were caught on the edges of the cylinders. Resulting in them twisting. What, we didn't mark this one? This is number two. Okay, now it all makes sense. Here I have one and four. You can see that these rings are a bit twisted, and that's what must have caused... Well, you saw those flames coming from the headers, and you could tell that cylinders 2 and 3 were operating stably, while 1 and 4 only really fired high up in the rev range. Yeah, it's all because of the twisted rings. What's funny is that, well... Let's take a look at the rings. This might not be the best way to remove them. I remove the ring and what do we see? Well, to the touch, in terms of pliability, elasticity... It actually feels fresh. It's as if I just bought it and removed it from the package. There's really nothing wrong with them even. What about this one? What can I say? Same story. They haven't burned or gotten charred. I don't see anything horribly wrong with them. They're not stiff. Fully elastic. So they're perfectly fine. Though we did notice upon removing the head that there was oil on the pistons. And that tells us that the rubber rings allow oil to enter the combustion chambers. But at the same time, there was no blow-by. I mean, of course, there were gases being expelled through the breather. But it was only as much as you'd get on a perfectly fresh engine. One that's an ideal condition. So nothing outrageous, it wasn't smoking or anything. Yet we still saw oil in the cylinders. 
though there wasn't too much smoke coming from the exhaust. Not to say we were running one, we just had the headers, which allowed us to clearly see the flames shooting out. Overall, these rings made for a curious effect. I would like to read your thoughts on the matter in the comments. Well, guys, I don't even know what to say about this. It seems to me like this was a tremendous 107% success. The engine actually ran on rubber piston rings. You saw it all for yourselves. You saw the engine start, you saw it run. By the way, why did it refuse to start in the end? The rings were all right. My guess is that when it began to struggle, the plugs might have gotten smothered with oil. And that's what prevented us from starting it. Hey, whatever. We saw it work until a certain point. And it worked pretty well, even. Tell us in the comments, should we try a conventional lower oil ring with two rubber seals, do all three, or just abandon the idea altogether? I want to see what you have to say. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.